Welcome aboard. I'm Captain Wayne Canning, uh, Master Boat Builder and Marine Surveyor. And today we're going to look at a common problem we find on a lot of boats that I survey. We are aboard a Beneteau 411 where the owner has installed a refrigeration system. For the most part, the installation is pretty good. The one mistake he made was to use wire nuts when connecting the electrical to the refrigeration unit. ABYC, the American Boat and Yacht Council, does not allow the use of wire nuts. The reason being is they can loosen up and cause weak connections, which can cause heat and in turn a possible fire hazard. So let's take a look at the problem and see. The owner has installed a refrigeration compressor down underneath the stove here. And if you take a close look, come on down. You can see that he's connected several of the wires using just wire nuts. And basically, it's a fairly sloppy installation. So what we're going to do today is clean this up and make all the connections with correct crimp type marine terminals. First thing we've got is the owner that has taken the main power wires come in and he's added an additional wiring for a spillover fan from the freezer unit to the um, refrigeration system. If you take a close look down here, you can see one of the wire nuts has already fallen off and you can see the bare wires just hanging there. So we're going to clean this whole mess up. What we're going to do is we're going to replace all of these connections here with crimp on terminals and we're going to use a terminal strip that we will fasten to the inside here so that all of the wires can come neatly to this terminal strip and then to the refrigeration unit. That makes troubleshooting the unit easier and will also make making all the connections. But we don't want to just disconnect everything because the wires are obviously not well color coded. So we're going to take it one wire at a time and just do one connection at a time. First thing we'll do is go ahead and mount the terminal block here where it's relatively easy to get in. We'll do one side at a time. And now I need to find a screw. We'll screw up one side at a time. And that'll hold the position while we get the screw on the other side. And half the battle on these things is getting your tools into the position. Alright. And then getting them back in. Okay. okay, next step is to verify that the power has been disconnected. First wire we will disconnect is the ground wire. And you can see how poorly connected these wires were. And we'll go back to the original ship's wiring. And we will cut off all of that twist it up end. And then strip back a little bit. And we're going to use a marine type crimp connector, ring terminal. These um, come color coded for different size wires. This is yellow being for um, number 12 and larger wire. And we just slip that. The little wire twists and strands don't slide out, slip it over the wire, and we very simply grip it on there good and tight. Next, we'll connect it to the terminal strip. get carried away, we've got this other end here that will also go on the terminal strip. Let's put the feed side on the bottom first. Mm -hmm. 
and have clean up the end of this wire. This is one of the wires. I want to make sure we don't get tangled up in anything else while we're doing this. Is one of the wires that will go to this spillover fan. Once again, we just crop off the bad end. Strip back about a quarter of an inch on there, and because this wire is a smaller wire, we're going to use a blue colored crimp connector. And why people use wire nuts, I'm not quite sure, because crimp connectors really are quite easy to use. I think it's because they're just used to using the twist arm kind that you get from Home Depot and such. Well, wire nuts are really designed for solid copper wire, and solid copper wire is not allowed on boats because it breaks due to vibration. And the wire nuts don't properly compress the stranded wire that you find on boats. That's why they come loose and will fall off. All right, that's static. Now we need to hook up the ground wire. And I'm not thrilled with the color of this wire. Place this wire with properly color-coded wire. The, um, the owner has used brown and orange, which are not really properly color-coded for marine use. Um, DC systems should be either using black or yellow for the ground and red for the positive. So we'll replace this piece of wire while we're in here. And of course I forgot to put that screw in there and I needed another wire connected to it. So let me just take it apart again. And you can see the ring terminals sort of have a top and the bottom because they stand out on high on one side and they're sort of flat on the other side. So when we go to put these back in, I'm going to put them on so that you can see they're like that instead of crushing over each other like that. That will make for a nice, neat connection with the screw right through them. don't want to try to cram more than two wires or, or two connections onto any one post if you can avoid it. We also don't want a lot of extra wire, but we want a little bit of what you could term service loop. So I'll cut that back to about that length. Adler Barber uses their own screw type connectors on their units. So you can't really use a proper crimp type connector. So we'll just slip the wire in there being careful not to let the strands come out. And why don't you come over here and take a close look at the gun. It's a screw type that pushes down on top of the wall. Insert that and show it. Okay. Okay, we'll make sure that wire is in there good. Give it a little tug to make sure it doesn't come loose. And that would take care of the negative side of this. Get rid of some of this excess wire. We'll clean up some of this excess wire and put some um, proper wire ties on it before it's all set and done. All right, now we can uh, proceed to the positive side. I'll take this off of the duration unit first. Okay. And once again, we're not going to use orange wire, so get rid of that completely and we'll replace that with red wire when we get to that point. Okay, just going to go ahead and clip off that end. Oops, almost got the camera person. 
Okay, back and another ring. Nice and tight on there. And come over here. Sometimes if you have a lot of wires to connect to your strip, more than two connections as we did up there, you can run a jumper wire to another post and get more wires on there without cramming a bunch on one screw. You can also buy little metal strips that bridge over and will connect them together, which can be very handy. Got an inline fuse here. Just then clean it up. And that will be another blue one. Over here. Make sure when you put that on there that you don't spread the wires out when you're all inside of the connector. Sometimes it helps to give it a little pull. Make sure you got that on there nice and tight. opposite each other. Screw through there and get it started. This is always the hard part, getting the screw start. your wires are kind of neat, separated, not all twisted and bundled together. I like to try to keep them about the same length if I can. so that the wire will fit in there without spreading out any strands. And then we hold the wire in at the same time we tighten the screw so that it doesn't get pushed or slip back out. And we want to make sure it's good and snug. Okay, there we go. Close to being done. Now, for some odd reason, we have connected these two wires with wire with wire nuts here, just a little short connection. I'm guessing that the person doing the install did not I want to be careful about that. I have two at the same time. Did not have a proper spade type connector. They have lots of different types of connectors available to you. And we so happen to have one. And once again, as we get to smaller wires, you can see we've dropped down to pink in color. Alright. Let's 
fire also looks just a little short, but it's long enough to make it. So we'll just put that off without wasting too much wire. wire nuts that were really not needed at all. Just because when they were doing the install, they didn't have the right connectors. And it really does pay to keep a bunch of different size connectors around because you never know what you're going to need. Once again, one wire at a time. You don't take a bunch of stuff off all at once. All right, final step is to clean up the wiring a bit with some wire ties. Or zip ties, as some people like to call them. At any rate, they're cheap, easy to use, and they can really make a difference on how professional the job looks. So don't be afraid to use lots of them. They're cheap. If you make a mistake, you cut them off and put another one on. But you want to make sure that everything is neat. This keeps wires from getting hung up on other things. Makes it easier for troubleshooting. that you have to, it just makes it look nice. And there you have it. We're all cleaned up, ready to go. We'll do a final test to make sure that it's working okay, but we should be good to go. And you can see how much neater that is. It is now up to code. Because we are using a terminal block, it's easier to troubleshoot. You can put a voltmeter on there. Oh, one last step. All right, final step is we want to put a cover over the terminal switch. Uh, not terminal block, excuse me. Um, put a cover over the terminal block to prevent any accidental shorting if somebody should stir some equipment in here or whatever. We want to put a cover on it. I've just cut it out of a scrap piece of plastic and drill, pre drilled it so that it's ready to go. So, what I can do is pop the hole in here. You know what I did? I brought the screws back up to the car.
we have it. All set. Very nice. Oops, let's get that screw a little tighter. Nice, clean, professional installation. One that will be easy to troubleshoot if one ever needs to. And meets recommendations and is likely to be much more trouble free. Simply because you have good connections which aren't going to fail you. And that's it for today. We've gotten rid of our wire nuts. We know how to do the installation correctly. The best way to do it is do it right the first time and you won't have to redo it and you won't have problems in the future. So now all that's left to do is clean up and have that beer. Have a good one.